Hey guys, it's Goosebumps Completionist, and today I'm bringing you another short story versus episode video. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing Don't Wake Mummy, the short story versus the episode. Now off the bat, I want to let you know, I don't really rate the short stories in my reviews for Tales to Give You Goosebumps. So, for those of you that are wondering the grade of this short story, for Don't Wake Mummy, it depends on which day of the week <laughs> or what side of the bed I wake up on. I really lean a 4.5 to a 5. And I mentioned this in the Haunted House game review, and I, I think Awesome Ants as well, that these are kind of weird to rate and grade because I only do 0.5 increments generally. And where I settle with this um, as of today, I think it's a really fun one, very well done, very atmospheric. Honestly, I'd give it a 5 out of 5. Really, really would. Um, and it kind of mirrors that to the Haunted House game uh, video I did, where the episode I gave a 4.7 out of 5. And the episode I do rate on a normal basis. So it might sound kind of far apart, like a 5 and a 4.7, but they're a lot closer when we're dealing with the short stories. Because, like I said, I only do 0.5 increments with the short stories. And there's a lot, lot of additional things that can make it more closer or actually equal in some regards. And for for Don't Wake Mummy, either way you go, I have a blast with both. Honestly, if you have not read Don't Wake Mummy, go read the short story and then go watch the episode. These are This is a very short and sweet story either way you go. Um, it has a historical context. It has that Universal Monsters love. It has that Goosebumps cheese. Um, I think the episode might have a little bit more, but we'll get into that in a little bit. And, <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, off the bat, highly recommend this one. Um, so yeah, in the, in the short story slash book versus episode videos, we like to run down the basics. We like to run down characters first. So characters are like the main characters, side characters, and the villains. We're going to go over which ones I think are better. Then we're going to look at the overall atmosphere. Which one has a better atmosphere? And sometimes atmosphere can blend into two other things we sometimes discuss. Aesthetics are sometimes things we discuss. We're not going to discuss aesthetics in this video. But I will discuss tone. Because tone and atmosphere and aesthetics kind of all blend together. But I like to distinguish them. Because I do think that both of these have a little bit of a different tone um, that it was going for. So I will bring up tone in this video. Then we like to run over the overall plot. Which plot I view superior uh, the climax, which climax I find to be better, and then we have the ending, which ending I think is better. So, let's start with the characters. Let's start off with the main character, Jeff. So, Jeff is the younger brother archetype kind of character in Goosebumps. He's kind of that wimp. He's, he's more of a one-trick pony either way you go. He's... His whole thing is that he's scared and his sister pranks him and picks on him for being scared and kind of takes advantage of him. I think in the short story, Jeff has more... I don't know. Je Jeff comes off a little more wimpier in the short story, surprisingly to me. The episode, he is wimpy, but I think the actor kind of downplays his wimpiness to where it's just like nagging to him and he's not really like crying or like really complaining all that much i mean he does go to his mom a couple times but i don't know really with jeff he's just so basic and he doesn't really have much going for his personality i'm just going to tie them i really have no preference either way i think the the actor who played jeff i know a lot of people don't like him <laughs> but i think he's fine um jeff's just a fine character for this type of story and really he's my big negative with the whole story altogether. um for the um episode as in the short story it's only like 10 pages and i think that jeff is kind of i don't know the way that the short story ends i'm getting way ahead of myself kind of uh gives a little bit more redemption for him but like i said i, I really don't have a preference so i'm gonna tie jeff here okay now for kim kim is that bully older sister i think in the short story she's giving way more star treatment i think she has uh kind of a arc if you want to say and now what i mean by arc is that she is the bully and it's one of those that does the bully get punished 
maybe yes or no type of type of story. So she's a lot more involved, I would say, in the overall scheme of the story in the short story versus the episode. The episode she's played by AJ Cook, who's a phenomenal actress. Um, she serves the purpose well. I think she comes off slightly more mean in the episode, but really she's not even that mean compared to other characters I've seen in Goosebumps. I really don't view her as a negative. If people do, that's fine. I totally understand. But um, yeah, Kim's all right in the episode. She could be worse, way worse. So she gets a pass for me, even though she's kind of a jerk. But other than that, uh, if I had a preference for Kim, I actually would take the short story, only because I think that the angle the short story took with her character was kind of interesting. So yeah, uh, Kim's friend, I don't even remember if she's in the short story. I want to say she is. I don't think she is, though. She has a friend in the episode. Um, so to play it safe, I'm going to give the edge to the episode, only because I don't even remember her in the short story, and if she is, I'm sorry, she's kind of forgettable. At least in the episode, she has more star power there, so, episode. Uh, like I said, I don't even remember. <laughs> so, yeah, Kim's friend. Um, the mom. The mom character. She's kind of serves the same purpose, but I like her a little more in the episode, and here's why. I think the episode definitely gives her more of that star parent role. The actress who played her did a pretty well, you know, well-performed job. Um, she seemed to be more historically savvy and as in the book it seemed like the father was the linchpin to all that knowledge uh even though she did know a little bit i think the episode she she's treated a little bit more serious and i like that so yeah there you go uh and the father character now it's completely different in the episode he's completely gone off in egypt he has like one scene where he's on the telephone and in the book you know, he's mentioned that he's gone to Egypt on an excavation trip, and then he actually comes back in the story, and he's involved in the climax and stuff. So for the dad, I'll give the edge to the book here. Now, for the mummy, the, the mummy villain, okay, the episode deals it deals with it very differently, okay? So there, there, both ways you go, there is a real mummy. But the short story... There is more of a fake out thing with the mummy the whole time until the very end. As in the episode, uh, right around the climax, there's an actual mummy that's come to life and stuff. So it's very different. And I think the mummy's done very creepy in the episode. So for that, I'm going to give the edge to the mummy to the episode. And also there's some really cool history tying it to like legit Egyptian pharaohs like Ramses and stuff. Uh, it just, it's really fun. Okay with this character so i'm going to give the edge to the episode now the mummy cat it's not in the short story so obviously it's going to go to the episode the mummy cat it's an awesome character love him so yeah so that's basically all the characters there now the atmosphere the atmosphere either way you go it, this is a small setting it takes place in a house all in the same day at least in the episode the short story uh it's still the same thing it, it I think the episode did a very good job capturing the atmosphere of the um, short story. And like, I don't want to get too ahead of myself with the tone and stuff. Uh, and kind of just def deflate what I'm going to say about the tone here. But I think overall for the atmosphere, they're pretty much on par with each other. Minus the tonal differences. So I'm going to deadlock the atmosphere. But going into the tone... There's two totally different tones. The book's tone is this, is like this light-hearted prank type of tone where it's kind of scary it involves the whole family and the twist comes way after the fact after there's a perspective change and you're like oh crap <laughs> so yeah it's kind of some dark comedy going on there as in the episode's tone all i'm all i get out of the episode's tone is homaging and paying respect to those old black and white mummy movies uh it's just very campy. It's way more campy because I think Rick Drew added a lot of campiness to the, to the uh, writing here. <laughs> and uh, William Fruit still was able to capture the campiness in a scary way. And both really have different tones that I quite enjoy. And I can't really make my mind up completely if I'm 100% on this. But I, I do lean one, so I am going to pick which tone I like more. I like the episode's tone a little more. I like that it's... Campy, but can't be done right. I like that. 
it, it knows what it is. I like, <laughs> you know, it doesn't, it doesn't convolute anything with this campiness. It's still kind of funny. It has its like unintentional funny moments. And I, I don't know. It just, this speaks to me just a little more than the short story. And I'm not trying to take anything away from the tone of the short story. Both are really great, but I just slightly prefer the episode. And that's where I'm leaning. Now we're getting into the overall plot. Now the plot is slightly different. Um, the short story goes into the plot um, where, of course, it starts off where you see Jeff getting picked on by his sister Kim. And of course, the sarcophagus arrives with the mom at home and the sarcophagus gets taken into the basement and the mom tells the kids not to, not to mess with it. And Kim kind of uses the sarcophagus to, you know, prank Jeff and gets his idea to, you know, mess with him and do all these little jump scare things and comes to the conclusion to dress up like a mummy um, and try to scare Jeff. And there's this big climax thing when the father comes home and the father has an ominous warning about what this mummy potentially is and it's dangerous and of course, there's may or may not be a, a, an alive mummy that they trap down in the basement to keep down there because they don't know what else to do with it. Uh, and there's also this like Night at the Museum vibe um, with the plot, where you know it feels very Night at the Museum almost, you know. And I kind of respect that with the plot. And and honestly, the with with the I'm getting ahead of myself with the twist and the ending and the climax and stuff, but that twist really sends home this story for being just a it was genuinely shocking so the overall plot was really really engaging as in the episode it starts off with like him talking about how his sister got humbled one day or something and he goes it's like telling a story in the past tense or something where <laughs> he gets pranked by his sister and her friend and he jeff and kim and the, the mom get the sarcophagus and they put it down in the basement and then they watch these horror old like mummy movies and they get this idea to go down into the basement and mess with the mummy and all this and um in this the father doesn't come home and there's a whole different climax with with the whole the real mummy being actually involved and all that and the ending is way different in, including the uh uh, and even the inclusion of the uh, mummy cat is just very different. And it's different other way you go. And, but if I had a preference for overall plot, I really don't. I like them both for their changes. And this is one of those things where I really appreciate that the episode tried to do something different than the short story. And I think they both succeed in both, in both of what they do. So I'm going to tie them here for overall plot. I think they're both equally enjoyable. Really do. And then we're getting into climax. Really, I don't even think the short story has a real climax, to be honest. I really don't think it does, because uh, it is that 10 to you know 12-page th short story length. A lot of these sometimes don't have climaxes. I guess the climax in the short story would be that the father comes home and reveals this, reveals this bombshell that this Night of the Museum stuff is going on, potentially with this mummy. That's what the inscription said, and they said this mummy's dangerous, but the mummy's are already alive, so they lock him in the basement, kind of thing. As in the <laughs> episode, the climax is um, after getting off the phone with the father, uh, and after the prank with Kim uh, on Jeff unfolds, the mummy comes out, and they have to uh, run down into the kitchen and figure out how to defeat this mummy that's come to life. And there's a, a thing involving the garbage disposal in the sink i don't want to spoil it but two very completely different uh climaxes but if i had any preference i think which one felt more tense to me and i really appreciate it more is the episode i do appreciate the climax in the episode just a little bit more now for the overall ending okay now this like i said in my my episode review this is one of my favorite endings in all of goosebumps <laughs> this little the little twist ending is amazing. I love this twist ending so much. It, it just speaks to me on a deep level. It speaks to my inner child. I love the ending to this episode. But I'm not taking anything away from the ending of this short story either because it is a shockingly good twist. So there's a perspective change and you kind of learn something that is 
it's kind of like retribution almost and it feels really satisfying to see this ending happen and then there's also a cliffhanger about what's coming next because something may or may not be down in the basement and be alive so yeah both are really great and both are really one's really silly and one's really satisfying for the retribution angle to it and i love them both so equally i'm kind of going to just tie them here for the ending i really can't decide um i don't know i, I slightly lean the episode but i'm really going to acknowledge the ending to the short story here and just kind of tie them because i really enjoy both so that leads to which one do i find superior now there's a lot of ties here and a lot of give and takes where i prefer one or the other and this is one of those situations where i can't really decide which one's better for me i think the short story satisfies one itch I might have, and then the episode satisfies a completely different, separate itch. Um, and they both are great. Uh, I highly recommend both. And I just can't decide, so I'm going to deadlock them here. They're both deadlocked. I mean, these are great. I mean, seriously, if you have not read the short story or watched the episode, you should do it. Um, I think they're both equally fun. I think either way you go, you're going to have a blast with it. Now, remember, this is a book franchise goosebumps is so read the short story first and then go watch the episode and you might like one more than the other you might like them both equally like me or you might just not like them at all and that's perfectly fine too you know um but let me know down in the comment section if you have watched this uh episode of don't wake mummy or read the short story of don't wake mummy or seen seen and watched both let me know down in the comment section which one do you prefer do you prefer the short story or the episode i'm dying to know and i'll see you next time